Hi everyone and hi muckers and welcome to this video. Okay, so in this video I'm going to be addressing everything that has happened within the past 24 hours. So let's just get to that and also one thing I want to do and I think that it's important to do this is I want to watch and go through the videos in their entirety instead of like quoting different parts from it or maybe quoting you know just different segments. I think it's more important to kind of sit through and hear exactly what these individuals have to say and then kind of what I have to say in response um, but this will be in relation to Rich Lux and Sebastian Soto so both of those people um, uploaded videos last night on me um, and we're gonna go through Rich Lux's first so it's called Adam McIntyre leave me alone you bully so whenever we go on it so for a little bit of context what happened was um, <coughs> sorry for coughing yesterday morning um, I was going on reddit um, and I saw this clip, and I was going through one of the drama channel forums, and I was seeing a lot of clips on Rich. Oh shit! I was seeing a lot of clips on Rich Lux, and I'm not going to get into them here because I, I, not knowing what I know from Rich, I don't think it's important to bring that up. But basically, I have DMs on Twitter, and I went through my DMs, and I was DM'd this tweet from this account, like spill tea or tea spill, and it was a video of Rich Lux responding to Jeffrey Star getting called out for. Imagine Standing a Racist by Gabriel Zamora and he basically just said something along the lines again I don't feel the need to repeat it because I've now been given context on how he felt during that moment and how he feels now And that he has apologized for it, um, but it was quite the shocking clip towards me um, And so all I did was like I would do with any other tweet that I would see that would shock me Which was I quote retweeted it and said what and then the like crying face emoji so I never ever tweeted out saying that Rich Lux is a racist. I never once tweeted out anything along those lines. I was reacting to a pre-existing tweet that had a lot of engagement. So that was one thing that Rich in his video, and again, I completely respect this video and I'm gonna go into why in a second, but he does say about that I, I did multiple tweets um, like calling him a racist and stuff like that. I just wanna say that any tweet that I did last night is still on my... Sorry, it's Milo. Any tweet that I tweeted is still on my account. Milo's shh. Any tweet is on my Twitter still. I didn't delete anything for that purpose. Like, I'm obviously, now I'm announcing that I'm going to delete the tweet in which I said what, quoting the original tweet from Rich Lux. Um, but I didn't tweet anything else out other than that, and I was just responding to a tweet. So whenever I saw that he had made this video where it was me accusing him of being a racist and calling him out for being um, a racist um, or alleged and um, things he had said in the past that he doesn't stand with now, um, which I respect that he doesn't stand with them now, I never once was tweeting out saying that that what he was. I was responding to... Um, a shocking clip of him and I can still say from hearing him now it is still a shocking clip um, in which he says that he, we're not gonna get into it but <clears throat> we will hear what he has to say in this video all right um, and I want to respond to the entire thing so we'll go into that video that I wanted to make today but here I am I've been getting bombarded with messages on my Instagram of people saying that I am racist and they're gonna unsubscribe from my channel. And like, where is this coming from? Like, what, what is going on? And I, I, like, here I am again, because this happened like, what, two, three years ago? And I see a tweet of Adam McIntyre with someone. So basically, this was my tweet. It was quoting T Sesh, sorry, that's what the account was called. And it says, Rich Lux justifying racism, and this is why he will never hold Jeffree Star accountable for anything he worships him. So again, this is my only tweet, which is basically me saying, what? So, again, I'm so willing to hear what Rich Lux has to say in this video, and I really apologize for upsetting him, and I genuinely do, Rich Lux. But at the same time, um, in terms of speaking on the tweet, I never tweeted anything saying that he was a racist. I never tweeted anything out saying that he had done anything. I literally was just responding to a shocking clip and whenever I had tweeted this out, the responses were also from my followers who were shocked at it. They weren't calling Rich Lux a racist, they were being shocked at the fact that he was justifying Jeffree Star for being called out for being racist. So I think that's important to note here, and this again was just what I had tweeted. Hung out with, <clears throat> posting on Twitter that I'm racist in- 
Again, I completely respect where he's coming from in this video. I completely respect it, but I never tweeted out that he was racist. Retweeting old clips from things that I've already addressed from years ago. And again, the point that's brought up throughout this video is that I responded to multiple different clips of him and was just calling him racist and it was this smear campaign, which is what a lot of people are calling it. <clears throat> it was one clip. I responded to it and said one word. I didn't call him anything attached with that. I was responding to a shocked clip the same way I would respond to it if anyone else had said that kind of stuff. That was it. And he goes on to say that the reason that I did this was because I wanted to win the Steamy Award, the H3 Steamy Award. Which is an interesting point because if I see a shocking clip, and again, I respect where he's coming from now and I completely understand um, and I acknowledge that he's apologized for this in the past and that's why I'm going to be deleting the tweet. But at the same time, to assume that the only reason that I'm being shocked at a clip of you being problematic is because I want to win an award is not the angle I'm taking from it. I could have been sent this tweet last week and I would have also said what? I could have been sent it next week and I would also say it's just because the Steamy Awards were happening, first of all, I'm pretty sure at the time of this, which it doesn't even matter, but I'm pretty sure at the time of this, the Steamies were already filmed and the voting was already over. It was never once a case of that, and it's also really important to know that if I see a shocking clip of someone saying something problematic, and I don't know the context of it, I'm going to have the same reaction to it, regardless of if we're nominated for an award or we're not. And I really think that's important to say, because that's what this entire next section of the video is about. However, I completely respect that this is the, the angle that he's taking with it, and I completely can see where he's coming from, and, and I respect that he um, thinks this way. So it's not me disrespecting that he thinks this way, but all I'm saying is, point blank period, that's not the case. You see a shocking clip, you see a shocking clip. Why, why, why are you coming for me? I don't even, I don't even mess with you like that. Then I asked, <sighs> Ethan Klein posted this, uh, drama channel of the year where you vote for your favorite drama channel. I'm on there. Adam's on there In the comments people are saying oh Adam you're bringing up old receipts of rich Lux to get people not to vote for him That is some that when that happened years ago. I went through hell to deal with that. I Almost gave up and I pushed through and I've worked my ass off to get to where I'm at from sleeping on the floor to get to where I'm at today to be able to provide for myself and so for you to go online and regurgitate this propaganda that I've apologized and made several videos for just so that you can look good and win a voting competition for drama channel of the year go ahead if it means that all right okay first of all if I see a shocking clip I'm going to respond to a shocking clip regardless of all the time however one point I do want to bring up is that he said how hard he's worked to move past this and that he's apologized for this and that he has taken it upon himself to educate himself and he has built himself from this and tried to move on and again apologize. <clears throat> I want to say based on that rich looks I'm deeply sorry and I genuinely fucking mean that because whenever I see this clip on Twitter I didn't I didn't run to see if there was apology videos for it I was just shocked by the what was inside of the video, what you had said in the video. However, in knowing that you had done apology videos and that you had done this here and this is not how you align anymore, and again, I was just shocked by the video. However, I'm able to completely acknowledge that you've not only moved past this, but you, that you've apologized relentlessly for this. And genuinely, I want to say that I'm really sorry that I brought this up again whenever you had apologized for it. Because whenever I was sent this tweet, my thoughts immediately, my own mistake, was not to immediately run to see, has Rich Lux apologized for this? I was just shocked by what was inside of the clip. And again, that's my, my, my fault, my problem for not going and looking. And I really apologize for bringing this up again. I was not, not, not calling you racist with this clip. I was not, call I was not. I was responding to a shock clip like we saw on the screen and said, what?
that was it. However, I really, really, really deeply apologize for bringing this up again whenever you have clearly moved past it and are a completely different person in today's day and age. And the same point that you brought up about not watching my videos, I genuinely do not really watch that many videos within the drama space. So again, that is my fault and I apologize for not knowing what version you, um, you know, are now, like how you've evolved as a person. I apologize for that because I only really see the same way you probably do with me is things that are just on Twitter. And again, I apologize for that. And that's 100% my fault. But I genuinely just want you to know, Rich Locks, that whenever I saw this video, it was just a shocking video. I quoted it, I did not say anything else other than what, and I genuinely, genuinely, genuinely apologize that if you've apologized for this multiple times and you do not align with this anymore, this thinking, this action, I really apologize for bringing it up again. I was just shocked by the video and I quoted it and said what? <clears throat> However, I really genuinely apologize for it. Um, let's carry on and see what happens. Much to you, go ahead, take me off the list because it's not worth it for me i know i'm a good drama channel there's one thing i know how to do is drama but you're hitting below the belt to to win what also this i respect that this is the angle he's taking from it but to assume that someone would just see a video of you being problematic problematic and quote it being shocked just because they're in the lead up to win an award is not necessarily the angle that I would go with, however I respect that this is the angle that he's going with, but to assume that there would be a time where I wouldn't, if I didn't know the context, respond to this clip with being shocked, that's not the case. I've done this with Shane, I've done this with Jeffrey, I've done this with James, I've done this with Tana, I've done it with everybody. When you see a shocking clip of someone being problematic, your opinion kind of stays consistent in when you're going to react to that. So, again, I just want to emphasize that for all the things that I apologize for and all the things that I acknowledge that I've done wrong in this situation, Rich Lux, I just did one tweet being shocked about a problematic clip of you. That has nothing to do with any of us being nominated for a Steamy Award. That has to do with it being a shocking clip. And again, I completely acknowledge and respect that you've moved on from this clip and I'm really fucking proud of you. I really am. And I'm sure everyone is. But that doesn't take away from the fact that this clip is really bad. This is a really bad clip. Now, I'm not going to dwell on it because you've moved on from it, and I respect that. I really do. But let's not assume that I... Because we were in... Say I saw this clip yesterday, and I would be really strongly opinionated about it. But I'd be like, oh, we're nominated for the same award, so I'm not going to respond to it now. It's not worth it. I don't know you. I don't want to know you. That is not cool. Why would you do that to me? I'm so, I'm so, so I'm like so nervous and dropping stuff. Why would you do that to me? I don't, what, for what? I apologize and I went through therapy to get through that time of my life. And if you look at that video that he's posting from years ago, I'm not even the same person in that video. Totally different look. I've worked on myself 100%. This is not cool. And I don't understand why you would do that to win a competi online competition of best drama channel of the year. Are you effing serious with me? He just stated again how much he's moved on from this and I completely respect that and I completely get that. And that's something to be very proud of. <clears throat> Seeing a very problematic clip anytime is not going to change my opinion based on if you're nominated for an award or not, Rich Lux. And I hope you can also see that point. As much as I've seen how, where so much of where you're coming from in this, and I respect it, and I genuinely do, I hope you can also see the fact that, number one, I didn't call you racist. Number two, I responded to a shocking clip that was tweeted at me and DM'd me, and also on Reddit of a very problematic state statements from you and I just said the, the word what and again I'm, I keep reiterating this point and you're probably at home like why does he keep saying this because that's all it was and number three that I'm equally as sh shocked at a clip in the moment if we're nominated for an award or we're not that you're gonna stoop that low to hit below the belt 
I said when I was nominated, thank you for the nomination. I'm, I'm shook by everybody on the category. They're such great people and best of luck to whoever who wins. It's not that serious to me. But evidently it means so much to you that you're gonna go through and try to dig up dirt on your competition so you could win best drama channel of the year. Go ahead, if it means. All right. Also, what he said that he has done there by the nominees, I made a video yesterday, the day before, and I went through and I was speaking highly of all the people nominated because from Rich Lux to Mysterious T to Mr. Beard to Dennis to all of these people that are included in this, they're all amazing creators and I genuinely think that. I think they've done so much for the community, especially people like Rich Lux who have been doing this and just breaking so many boundaries on what it means to be a drama channel in the best way possible. So what he's saying that he's done there, I've also done because I genuinely mean it. This is all stemming from me quote tweeting one tweet of him and I said what? Is that much to you? Go ahead. But to me, that's not okay and does not sit right with me. I have worked on myself. That is not okay. I am literally triggered by what is happening right now on Twitter and my Instagram DMs. That is not okay with me. I am not a racist. And I have said before, I've apologized for that clip. It was taken out of context. People twisted it up. And every time something, I'm on the verge of something good happening to me, people bring that old receipt back up every time. I'm often conflicted. Is this something that I have to apologize every single time it's brought up? Or is the several, three, four apologies good enough and just leave it the way it is? And I've told myself every time it gets brought up, I'm just going to apologize for it because it means that much to me wholeheartedly because that's not who I am. And I completely respect him saying this. I think hearing him from me being shocked at the clip yesterday and me hearing him say this, I very much so respect it. I very much so respect it. I'm so angry right now. Okay, I'm back. I had to take a moment to collect myself and just breathe. I really... I don't know. I don't know. I mean, get through it. By you sharing that old clip that I've apologized for time and time again, it just really brought me back and really triggered me to a place that I thought I've worked through time and time again. So I just feel like because of that, and you sharing it and now your audience sees that not knowing that I've made several videos apologizing about it that I've worked through it not knowing the trauma that I went through but you sharing that to your audience just so that you could win a vote really really hurt my feelings and it really took me to a dark place I'm gonna step away from the internet for a few hours so I can collect myself and come back because it, it really hurts Rich <clears throat> I completely apologize for triggering you and bringing you mentally back to a place on when this clip was. I would love to have a conversation with you just about the fact that this clip was, um, shocking on its own. And I really would love to have the conversation with you about this clip being shocking and me apologize for this bringing you mentally back to the place you were when you were at that clip and you feeling like you can't escape from it and you've apologized for it I genuinely apologize for that and that I can tell that means so much to you and it I'm so sorry that I've hurt your feelings and I genuinely mean that I really wish you wouldn't bring it like lower it down because the things we're talking about here are racist claims I never called you racist you're talking about it here you're lowering that to as if it's about an award. So whenever I'm hearing you talk about the fact that this has upset you and hurt your feelings and brought you back to a place, I, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. There's no need though to continue associating this with the fact that you were nominated for an award. Rich, how many times has this clip, like you said, been spread around? How many times out of that have you been nominated for an award within it? How many times within that has something really good happened? Sometimes these clips just go around and they're shocking. Now with that being said, I really apologize for hurting your feelings and I really apologize for bringing this up again. It was just DM to me and I saw it and I was shocked by it. I apologize for bringing you back to that place. I genuinely mean that. 
I'm sorry for doing that. That's just where I'm coming from with it. That's where I'm coming from with it. And Rich, I completely hear you. I completely hear you. And as much as people are telling me that like, um, oh my God, like Adam's not gonna watch this video or Adam's gonna hate this video. I don't think it's, I don't think it's a bad video at all. I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed being able to sit down and, and hear what he has to say. And it's provided me furthermore with just so much context about everything. And I appreciate that. So with that being said, Rich, I do just want to say finally again, I'm sorry for bringing you back to that place. My intentions with doing that one tweet where I said what was just that I was shocked at it. It was just that I was shocked at it. And that's it, honestly. However, I apologize for hurting your feelings. All right. The next thing I want to do um, is there's a video that we're going to get to now. Okay, so for the second part of this video, we are going to be reacting to this video from Sebastian Soto. And it is called Breaking My Silence About Adam McIntyre, My Experience. Now, first and foremost, I just want to say that before we get into Sebastian's video, um, Sebastian on his YouTube channel for the past couple months has been talking about the fact that he met up with a YouTuber that everyone within his space watches, and they basically treated him like dog shite, and has basically just been describing me each time, will basically do live streams in which um, he will get his audience to just completely trash on me, and he never once acknowledges it, um, and it has created this, like, cesspool of people just hating on me and first of all I can take it so it doesn't affect me um, but something that Sebastian goes on to say in this video is that my audience have been doing that to him and I just think it's so ironic because you can look at any of his live streams and each time um, he will talk about these youtubers that are so rude and so big-headed and so um, they treat others like shit and they're so fake and they're so manipulative and he'll describe me each time but he'll never say a name. And I always thought it was really interesting because I, I met Sebastian once, briefly, and I was like, if I was so rude in that encounter, I really wish he would have just said that Adam McIntyre and, and talk about it, instead of like, talking, like hinting at a YouTuber, and then like, alluding to me, but then never even saying a name to start with. I just think like, if you're gonna say it, say it, so I can respond. So he's, he's finally done this video, so we can respond to it. All right. So, let's get into this video. We are going to watch it. Now, it is 18 minutes long, so I'm going to put it on 2x speed, and let's get into it. So, again, obviously this video was made hot in the heels of Rich Lux posting his video, um, but this has been something that Sebastian has been waiting to do for quite some time. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to our <clears throat> channel. I hope you all are having a really, really good day. If this is your first time on my channel, my name is Sebastian. Love this shirt. Open arms. I do TV Love shows it. every day, and if you guys don't know, I never did not this series, okay? If you are a returning subscriber, you know that I'm not using cute girls, um, being messy about Trisha, doing everything but being serious. So this is a very different video, but I just wanted to start off with saying that this is coming from a place of respect and of love. This is not an Adam McIntyre bashing video. I don't believe in doing that, but I do believe in trying to open people's eyes with respect and with love. If you speak to somebody with kindness, they will open their eyes and their heart a little bit more. So Adam, I'm doing this because at 20 years old, I thought I knew it all too, and I thought I was the hottest shit around. And I promise you that there's so many lessons that we need to learn in life, and so many things that we're gonna go through, and that was somebody would have spoken to me. Oh, sorry. Before we get into this video, I do just want to give a little bit more context about Sebastian Soto. So, Sebastian Soto um, first came to my notice whenever, and he'll talk about this, so I'm going to get through it really briefly. Sebastian first came to my notice um, whenever I got a message from him saying that I had copied saying hey besties from him. And there was this back and forth for a bit, and he'll go into it in more detail, so I'm just going to briefly. He goes this back and forth a bit. Um, he was basically saying that I copied Hey Besties from him, then he was making videos, kind of hinting at the fact that I was stealing from him, and I was stealing from a small YouTuber, and da 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 da. Which is why, by the way, the reason that we changed to muckers on this channel. I say all the time, in my videos, whenever people ask me, why did we change from Besties? I've always said that, oh, like muckers, you know, it's something from dairy, it's more so something that we can just say, and you know, um, you know, uh, whatever. I've never really properly addressed it, and the reason is because I never want to give backlash to Sebastian Soto. Because he said so much that my audience have done that, that I never want to feed into that even more. So, by the way, guys, here's the proper reason on why we say muckers on this channel, is because Sebastian Soto is so determined that we stole saying besties from him, whenever, if you go back to one of my first Hey Bestie videos, we, or in a live stream, we talked about the fact that, it was actually back in like 2020, that Kim Kardashian has a video game called the Kim Kardashian Hollywood Game or something like that. And in the video she goes, hey bestie, and it got trolled on Twitter. 
it was like a Twitter moment where it was like, um, you type in bestie and the Kim Kardashian thing. It became a stan Twitter moment where, hey bestie. Where, oh, sorry, I have my phone on GX speed. Um, so this was where we got bestie from. Hey bestie. So stupid, right? Like not even, like whatever. So we started saying it and then Sebastian came into my thing, said that we, you know, he was getting taught that he was saying it first and da da da. And I kind of went back and forth for a little bit about it and then I kind of just was like, it's not really worth it. You know, he can continue saying it and we'll just say something else. Um, so we went through a transitional period of saying like something else and then we kind of like settled on muckers and again that took a little bit for people to get on board with because it's kind of an ugly word. Um, and then another thing is <clears throat> Sebastian would always get brought up in my YouTube comments um, because I had been on a trip to Paris maybe with my mother or something like that and we were in Paris and Sebastian had done some sort of live stream or some sort of video that was basically that he can't enjoy his honeymoon because people are saying that he copied Adam McIntyre by coming to Paris at the same time. So throughout my entire trip with my mother, I was getting these tweets that he was doing these videos and I'm pretty sure they're still on his channel where he's like on his honeymoon, him and his husband did like a, um, a honeymoon set of videos I assume um, and basically that he couldn't enjoy it or people were saying that he couldn't enjoy it because he was copying Adam McIntyre who was also in Paris which by the way <laughs> is just, it doesn't make sense now another thing was pretty recently, um, Sebastian Soto talks in this video about how basically, we'll see it before the end of the video so I don't want to put words in his mouth, um, but basically that he doesn't want to be my friend and I've never treated him with respect and stuff. Only two weeks ago was when Sebastian Soto came out with the exact same video that I posted the day after, which was a video in which I was going through it and I was saying like I had a breakdown or something like that. One of the next days, Sebastian posts the exact same video with the exact same title, exact same thumbnail, and even in the video addresses that he saw my one and that's why he's making it. Now again, that's not a problem, but there have just been so many instances from Sebastian texting me, DMing me, since we even met for the first time, which was the only time, that he, it just doesn't make sense for him in this video saying that he doesn't like me other than him just jumping on a bandwagon. So, let's get into it. <laughs> Try waking up, I would be very grateful. I'm saving a lot of artists, let me tell you that. None of us are perfect, bitch. I, mean, I was even interested to stand at one point, okay? But, anyways, um. Okay, regarding what happened yesterday with Adam and Rich Lex, I have to say that I was very disturbed. I understand Ethan is everyone's you know, favorite right now, and this seems our big deal. You know, you're getting recognized from a huge YouTuber. You know, that's huge exposure, amazing. But is it worth being mean? The links that Adam went to to get the votes is everything but nice. There is success for everybody. There is. The lengths that Adam went to to get votes. As in, Adam made a YouTube video talking about the steamies and said, please vote for me. And Adam, again, if we're providing the context that they're giving, gets tweeted a video of Rich Lux being problematic. Adam responds to video saying what? Being shocked. That is the lengths that Adam's going to. That's why I know Sebastian's not making this video out of a genuine place. Many more things throughout this video. That's the only difference in these two sets of clips. I've kept my mouth very shut about Sebastian over the times. I have nothing but love and... What is going on? Hold on. <laughs> my cat's eating my Burger King. No! Sorry. Um, sorry, I got Burger King and Tyler's trying to eat it. Um, that's the difference between these two videos. I um, completely understand the, the, the way uh, Rich Lux is coming at this video. And again, I'm putting my hand up and saying that I officially fully apologize to Rich Lux. And I feel really bad that I brought him back to that place and bringing up that clip again. It was not my intention. I was just shocked by it. Sebastian I have a different attitude with because Sebastian has made me uncomfortable in so many different so many different times and so many of my audience have picked up on it So many of my audience have picked up on him But we'll get into it. This time for everyone I feel like after 2020 instead of walking over each other pushing each other on the sidelines to get to the finish line and win And that's so pre-2020 We should be lifting each other's up each other each other up, each other up Now I know I sound like a girl from Mean Girls who wants to bake cookies and give it to everyone but I do there's so much success to go around. We don't need to do dirty. We don't need to play dirty. We don't need to, to walk over people to get somewhere. So my story with Adam starts in 2020. At September 13, 2020, I, I and my subscribers a little bit before um, decided to call each other besties. So that's B-E-S-T-E-A-S, so best T's, you know, T's. And so I did it. I launched September 13. I launched merch. It was great. It, it was so much fun. I had a mask. I had a shirt, everything. 
I made sure that every, every T channel I knew did not use the word besties. Now, I, I get besties is definitely a word that we all use, you know, but I, that's why I changed the, letter, the letters around and wanted it to be different. So he acknowledges that everyone says besties and that he changed the wording around, but whenever we did it, the wording was just bestie. So he's acknowledging that everyone says besties, but it's a problem when we had said it. So, starting around November, I started seeing that I was getting a lot of comments about popping at McIntyre, and I was like, what is this girl? So, I looked up his videos. Before, around November 27th, he never used the word besties. He would say either everyone, or he would go on and say, just go on straight to the team, okay? I started getting so many horrible messages, you guys. So January 2nd, I decided to do a video that I no longer have on my channel because of the hate. And it was basically me sort of reaching out to Adam and saying, listen, I'm not being part of that hate. I would just love it if you guys knew that before you call me Poppy Cat. And I showed a screenshot of when I did my, my live to promote my merch September 13th with the word besties. So it was just like, uh, you know, we can all use besties, girl, but I just want to be very clear. I didn't copy from anybody. With a comment, well, he commented on that video and he was very, very kind. He was, which thank you so much again for being kind. I reached out to him on Instagram thanking him again. And we had a very brief conversation where I just thanked him for being so sweet. And, you know, he was, he was very, very kind. About a month later, the comments started getting horrible. I started getting fat shaming comments. Even, I hope that two people in different videos said, I hope your dog's eyes, because usually my dog's are in the back. Um, you should never, you know, you should copy people, you're a fat fuck, blah, 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 just like horrible things. So I reached out to him and I said, look, I humbly ask you if you could please post on your, on your YouTube channel, even on the community tab, you know, at least say, hey, um, you know, we can all, I'll use besties, you know, something. But it was getting started kind of, and I had about 6,000 subscribers back then, and I was very overwhelmed, because I was, you know, and I'm still a very small channel compared to these, you know, bigger channels, and for me it was like, I don't get why he can't just do that. He wrote back, said, nobody deserves hate, blah, I'll keep an eye out. Why can't you just write on your community tab to leave me alone? Because... He never had shown me basically what was happening. He said to me that he was getting hate, and obviously that's one of the worst things that someone can say to you. But also, I was getting sent for so many weeks before that that Sebastian had been making shady comments about me, had been making fun of me without mentioning my name and about the besties and people being unoriginal. So, someone who has been actively making fun of me, actively using their audience to just talk shit about me in live streams is now coming forward to me and is basically wanting me to make a post about them and he basically says that the reason that I didn't do it was because I didn't want him to gain any subscribers but what is basically happening in that instance is if someone is so avidly, from my knowledge, doesn't like me and then comes to me and is like, can you basically do this post and you can do this post and you can like shout out my YouTube channel and you can say all this Whenever all his videos were live streams in which uh, some part of the live stream was him saying something and his audience in the comments ripping into me. For so long my Instagram DMs were people just letting me know that hey this guy Sebastian Soto is live and the audience are talking about you. And then after the thing in LA happened it was just that hey they're talking about what you did to Sebastian Soto. And I'm like we said like one word to each other. And that's something we'll get to as well. But, and I really yeah. do feel like the reason that he didn't do that was because of his determination to be the only one who wins. I don't know if he thought he was going to subscribers, I don't know if he thought that some of his subscribers were going to subscribe to me, I have no idea. But all I know This is, is such an interesting- I'm sorry, can you tell the two different angles I'm taking with this video between Rich Lux and this? To say that I want to be the only one who wins, most if not all of my friends are people within this space. That I genuinely love, that I will shout out their videos, that I will do anything, is that he didn't give a damn. He wrote that he cared, but you think he did anything about it? No, he kept using besties, and even bigger, okay? I kept using so besties. I left it alone, I said fuck it, I don't care. You know, it could've taken you three seconds. And you also started at nothing. And thank God for your Colleen drama that you are where you are at. And that is just the truth, okay? You could have helped me out so much, you have no idea what I was going through. It was December, and I don't know about you guys, but I get extra emotional, right? I was a mess, I was, I was like reading all these comments and it was just like so freaking overwhelming to me. I'm so sorry that you were getting them comments. I genuinely am, that's, one of the worst things as a content creator you get is those horrible comments. Sebastian, you also know and you were actively watching on your live streams when your audience were doing the same thing to me. I just didn't care when they did it because it was happening so much. Anyways, flash forward to 2021. I, um, I saw that Adam was getting ready to like do a trip and it was like a free Britney Here we rally and stuff and I was like, you know, it would be really cool if like, mm -hmm. You know, we could we could say hi to each other, like we can be friends. We're in the same community, right? Like, I I, I get that because I'm smaller. He doesn't see me as a colleague, but he's saying that, not me. Like he's he's saying these things as if I'm saying them. You know, he do, he doesn't see me as a colleague because I'm such a small YouTuber. Does he? Like you're just saying this. <laughs> I, I thought he can see me as a human being rather than see me as numbers. We share a lot of the same two thousand obsession. We share. Sorry, we share a lot of the same vibes, like Brittany and Lindsay. And I love that. 
Um, so I thought, you know, we could be friends. I didn't think that numbers mattered so much. I saw that he wasn't feeling good, and I and I wished him, um, I wished him well. He thanked me, and then um, I, I told him like, hey, whenever you're in LA, let me know. So he left me on red. Um, and then this is the part that sort of triggers me because I dealt with a lot of bullying in my past, and I've always wanted to, I've always wanted to be friends with everybody. To be very honest with you, um, and again, not, not everyone needs to be friends, and, and you know, we don't have to be best friends, all of us. But I think um, after my my brother passed, um, the way he did, it opened my eyes a lot, and it made me always want to share life with people, and sometimes, or not only that, but like you know. Be friends with people and, and be nice and and just you know be one. We're one community. Um, so Brittany's free. Brittany was free. Thank God. And he was here. He was here with other YouTubers, Sloan and, and whatever, and the girl from Insider. Um, Cat. She has a name. We went to an iPod. Um, don't really know how I got in. Just whatever. Um, I guess I don't know how. But anyways. I got in because they, they didn't check IDs. <laughs> if you wanna know, a lot of people ask that. They didn't check IDs at the door. They just checked COVID pass. So it was free, we were at a club, we were standing in line, my husband, myself, a couple- By the way, before he says on how this interaction happened, I need to tell you how this happened. All right, <clears throat> so we get to the nightclub. It's called the Thirsty Pig or, or the something pig? The something pig, right? We get to the bar. Um, Sloan and all of his friends are there before us. Me and Kat are in the hotel. We're taking many videos. We're just like goofing off in the hotel room. And we end up getting our Uber. It's in like West Hollywood or something like that. I remember there was an in and out right beside it, so it's pretty close. So we arrive, we say hi to Sloan, and we go to get in line. Now pretty quickly, someone stands in like front of me, and I'm pretty sure he was wearing all black, and it was Sebastian. And I, I knew Sebastian because of the Hey Besties drama, and I also knew from the live streams talking shit. Um, so he kind of stands in front of me and if anything, it's so like, it's so bizarre seeing someone that like any of these creators like in person, I felt the way with Sloan, I felt the way with seeing all these different people, right? So he's in front of me, um, by the way, beautiful looking person, like he's gorgeous in person and that's, that's, that's not me saying anything to butter you up, that's me saying as a compliment because I turned around to my friend Kat and I said the exact same thing. So he stands in front of me. And he basically says something along the lines, I can, because this was a conversation at hand that I wasn't thinking to remember, I don't. However, it was so short that I do. So he basically comes up and he goes, oh, hi, Adam. I go, oh, hi, Sebastian, isn't it? And I hug him and I go, how are you? I went, are you coming to the club? And he says, yeah, we're in line, we're next. I'm like, all right, that's perfect. Well, it was so good to see you. I'll see you before the end of the night. And I go back to get in line because people were already getting pissy that I was queue jumping because there was a big line, they were at the front, and we were at the way back. You know, LA people, <laughs> sorry. That was it. Now, Sebastian, and so anyway, I go back to Kat, and Kat goes, who's that? I went, oh, it's a YouTuber, Sebastian Soto, and um, do you remember the Hey Besties thing, because I told Kat about it. I was like, yeah, and Kat was like, oh, how's he doing? I was like, he's good, he's going into the club, like I said, we'll see him later. And she was like, all right, perfect. That was it. That story can be fact-checked by so many people. And so it makes me so furious that Sebastian Soto has the audacity to tell the story that I based, hold on. A couple friends, and I see him walking up to me. And I, uh, I was like, oh Lord, he's here. Like, I'm, I'm so excited to see him. You know, I was like, you know, in my head, I'm like, we, you know, we do the same thing. Like, you know, we have the same bites. You know, oh my God, it's gonna be so much fun. We can dance with Britney, whatever. He walks up and I said, hi Adam. And he turns around and he says, hi. Oh, Sebastian? Hi, I didn't know you lived here. I said, oh yeah, I live. Like five minutes from here. And he said, I'm gonna get in line and I can take a picture with you later. And he just walks away. Let me reenact that for you, babe. <clears throat> hi, Mucker, is it? Oh, hi. I didn't know you watched this video. You can get to the comments. I'll take a photo with you later. Who talks like this? Who talks like this? Nobody. Fucking hell. Literally, like, if anything in this story makes me furious, it's that he's flat out lying about our encounter in LA. It was so short outside of the club, and we were literally like, we'll see you in there. But if anything, it gets worse. He says that me and my friend were eye-rolling and laughing at him all night. All night. And he basically goes on to say that, all right, like, if you don't want to treat your subscribers like that or whatever, 
Me and Kat ran into these three people who were subscribed to my channel and we ended up spending the night at the club with them. Like, your argument, Sebastian, as much as you want to make this up, is so invalid because there is p pictures and videos of me and Kat hanging out with mucker- well, what are we called? Yeah, muckers at the Naughty Pig! The Naughty Pig! That's what it was called! The Naughty Pig nightclub until, like, 3 a.m. or something like that because they were so sweet. We were having great conversation. We had so much to talk about. I remember one of them loved James Charles. I know about Messi. And the others loved Trisha. Well, this was during the redemption arc. Y'all. His story is that we, we were laughing and, and rolling. First of all, what age are we, Sebastian? To say that I'm laughing and rolling eyes at you at the club? Sebastian, I think I saw you once that entire night and it was in the queue. No, that's not true. I saw him again whenever we were, I was going into the bathroom and he was coming out of the bathroom. And you know what we did? We hugged. You know what I do with any of my friends when I meet them on a night out and we're walking past each other? We hug. I'm, I'm sorry if Sebastian expected so much more of an encounter, but that's why I talk to people on a night out. I go, hi, how are you? It's good to see you. I give you a hug and then I'll go, I'll see you before the end of the night. Never once am I like, let's get photos. There were so many people that were there with us that night that literally are aware of this story. Because Kat was like, oh my god, that's the, the, the YouTuber there that Adam had just met and whenever we were getting in the line, and we were like, oh, they just went in. And I waved off, he didn't see me. That was it. There were so many people there in line with us. So, I don't know that if what he was expecting to feel disappointed by the fact that I I don't know but let's keep in mind I'm also in a new place I'm also 19 and that's not me saying oh I'm so young I'm just saying about the fact that <laughs> I'm at a club I'm 19 I don't know any of these people except for my close friend I know some of the youtubers here I've never been to a club in LA before I've never been out in LA before I'm genuinely confused by this one, y'all. And the, the fact that he now goes on to say that we were laughing and rolling our eyes, nobody does that at a club. We're not in preschool. So I'm over here like, girl, did I have an out-of-body experience and I asked for a picture? I remember asking for a picture. We never once stated about a picture, either of us, which is just so bizarre that this is being said. But it makes so much sense to me now that he's been on his YouTube for the past couple months saying about a YouTuber being so rude to him. And ironically, he came out with that video days after I came out with my video talking about how I didn't feel like I was fitting into the LA culture, which again happened with the breakdown, happened about the Paris vlogs. Right? My husband heard the whole thing and he was like, what just happened? And he yeah, and all of my friends were there too. So... He asked me, so actually, did you ask him for a picture? I said, no, I don't ask anybody for I didn't have any celebrities all the time. I work with celebrities. I have actual celebrities. I don't ask for their features. That's like the number one rule in LA, okay? He treated me like a straight up fan. The arrogance that came out of his skin and words and, and, and just the look he gave me was, it just really showed me that that is not somebody I want to associate myself with. And at the same time, I was like, damn, you know? Good. <laughs> and he goes on to say that he, he sent me a text like the next day. And he only brings that up because he knew that I would bring it up in a video talking about him. He literally texted me days after this supposed arrogant um, meet up and he was saying that he wanted to meet up again and he goes on to say maybe I'm just too easy on people and stuff like that No, Sebastian, let's be honest. You're only saying that because you knew that I would have brought it up. Oh My god, this video is so deranged. I'm so sorry. I've never had someone lie about me this amount It's but it makes sense considering he's been saying that he met up with this rude youtuber I'd be like Jesus fuck me if I heard this story, but then again, it's like who goes to a club and is pointing, laughing, rolling their eyes, and, um, you want a picture with me? I'm in LA. Like, what age are we, Sebastian? Don't text me that you want to meet up, that you want to do it again, if you had s s the fucking supposed arrogant meet up. And you go on to say you're doing it because you're so polite, that doesn't make sense. You're only saying it because you knew that I would have shown the text. I, I was so confused, I did not ask for your picture. I was not at a meet and greet, okay? I simply said hello to you, and your answer was, let me get in line and we'll take a picture later. Your... Yo, I'm so sorry. This does not happen in real life. This does not happen in real life. I rolling throughout the night was so unnecessary. 
I saw you and your friend laughing all the time every time I would go to the bar. I'm just, all I'm hearing here is that me and my friend had a fucking great night. Jesus. Again, I saw you twice that night, once going to the bathroom. Did I? I got two drinks at the bar throughout hours of being there. We weren't even at the bar. What's ironic, Sebastian, is that you go on and say about you being in, inside the bar and all. We were outside the bar the entire night. We were outside the club all night. And my favorite thing about this story is that it doesn't make sense, right? Because he's inside the bar, he's inside the club. Me and my friend, and also the YouTube, the, the YouTube subscribers who are so sweet. I think I still follow them on Instagram. I'll need to reach out to them and be like, hey babe, we need to talk about this. We were sitting outside all night. And then me and Kat left the club early. We didn't even stay. We stayed for maybe two hours. And then we went to in and out And if you were on my Instagram story at that time, you will know. We got electric scooters to in and out And then we stayed at in and out for like an hour and a half. Then went back to the club for five minutes to say bye to Sloan. And then we went to the pink wall. So we weren't even at the club for this amount of time and what he's saying. Sebastian, if you're inside the club, and we're outside the club, and you look at me and my friend, and we're laughing, it means we're having a great night. Try having one. I don't know if that was directly directed at me, but I felt like, am I not good enough to, to be in Adam's world? I don't know what it was, to be very honest with you guys, but every time I walk up to the bar, I felt like the laughing got a little more obnoxious. We were inside the bar! We were inside the club, y'all! We, we were outside! We were outside! The story has so many inconsistencies! Why is he just lying? Oh my god! The eye rolling, the up and down look. I'm not maybe your idea of perfect. I have some count on me. I don't have the numbers you have. What is this starting to get to? Open heart, Adam. And even though I allowed myself to feel a certain way because I felt so sad because of my husband. I felt so sad for so many days because I said, why am I not good enough for at least a nice embrace? Why am I not good enough to at least be treated like another human being and not just looked over as a number? Why? What? So he acknowledges that we met. He acknowledges that we met. Surely, okay, he lies about the picture part. But still, he says that we like hug and we talk about... What more does he want? I, I'm, I'm obsessed with the story part, with the, the photo. I'm, obs I'm obsessed with me in LA with my little skimpy shirt on going, I'm gonna get back in line. We can take photos after. Surely that logic would work with me taking selfies with my friend all night, me taking selfies with Sloan all night, me taking selfies with strangers on the street all night. Me taking videos with my Uber driver singing Total Eclipse of the Heart to her. <laughs> Wait, I wonder if I can find that. Cause this was from that same night. Like this, oh my goodness. I've never had someone genuinely just lie. Um, let me see if I can find this to kind of show you where we were at on that night, right? Um, okay, so from this night, let me see if I can get it. Sorry for the delay. Um, no, I don't think I'm going to get it. I apologize. Um, anyway, this is just, I've never had someone do this before. Nope, couldn't find the picture. Sorry, try my best. Damn it, it would have been really funny to show. Um, it's me and the Uber, and I'm like, do you know Bonnie Tyler? <laughs> like, he just was so rude and made me feel like such a loser. But you know what, he didn't make me feel. I allowed myself to feel. And that is where I should have not uh, allowed that. And that is why I'm doing this video, because you have to be able to stand up for yourself and say, hey, you weren't very nice to me. Well, silly, stupid, fucking naive Sebastian wrote him the next day and said, it was nice meeting you last night. I was so drunk because bro, I went into that free Britney rally and I just had fun, right? We were, we were having fun, we were all drinking, we were dancing, we were freaking Britney. I said, let me know if you want to grab drinks. I'd love to see you before you leave. So Sebastian, naive Sebastian, still. What? So now he has acknowledged. He's acknowledged that he had a good enough encounter with me, as short as it was, to want to do it again. But now he knows that I can use that text against him and is like, I can't believe I sent that. Are we seeing this? Are we seeing this? He just acknowledged that he sent me a text that he wanted to do it again. I was like, you know what, maybe he was having a bad night, maybe he was stressed, I still didn't understand. I was having an amazing night. <laughs> and the, the fan picture, but I was like, okay, you know, it is what it is, let me give him another try. Well, he obviously did not reply. Listen, you guys, we are not better than anybody. We are all the same. Numbers are more important to people than anything else right now. And that is very sad. I get that none of us, we have to be friends, we don't. You know, we might not want to buy. But you could be a little nicer, Adam. I could be a little nicer. I could have taken, I could have said to him, you know what, we'll not do a photo later. We'll do a photo shit night. I, I'm sorry, I literally cannot take this seriously. 
it's it's when you've lived it and it's completely different than what he's saying, you cannot take it seriously. I was so bullied when I was younger and this mean girl act, Adam, is very pre-2020. You know what, I don't, I don't think we should have been best friends because we obviously our souls do not connect. Are we not twin flames, Sebastian? But you could have just acknowledged me a little bit and you could have been a little bit nicer to me. It just seems like he didn't get the best friend attitude that I had with my best friend Kat or that I had with Sloan, and was jealous of that, and is now making up encounters that didn't happen to mask that. Because why else would you want to message me continuing to do it again? To go out again? And the snarkiness, the arrogance. I'm very proud of you for your work, your, you put in hard work. But if you want anything to last, you have to do it with a great, big, good heart. A humbled heart. Is that what you're doing with this video, Sebastian? Or are you doing it for clout because you know that Rich Locks posted a great video, by the way, a great video, and you're jumping on this. You know, you've been hinting at it for months now that you met up with this really, really, really rude YouTuber. I'm glad you finally got it off your chest. And the reason for that is because I can finally respond. Life is giving you so much. Be grateful for it. And don't just think you're the hottest shit around because as, as fast as you come up, the faster you might fall. I don't know if that's the same, but it is. I say if you have something that has been bothering you, I say stand up. And I finally have with this section of the video. With respect, with light, with love, I say, I will no longer allow anybody to walk over me. I will no longer allow anybody to make, or I will not allow myself to make myself feel smaller because somebody doesn't treat me nicely. I am more than numbers. I might not fit into your perfect world. I might not have your ideal perfect body or numbers, but I am a very, very nice guy and we could have had a great time. I'm not going to say that I don't think you're a nice guy. But you've consistently not been one to me. And I have no problem saying that. I have literally no problem saying that. Because it's all there. It's all there. Sebastian, you've made me uncomfortable on YouTube since that first time you've came into my DMs. You've made me so uncomfortable since that first time. You were waiting for the chance to meet me, to be able to make up your own story about it. I don't think you've been a good person to me. I think you're probably a good person, but you haven't been one to me. I'm glad that I did this. I hope that Adam- I'm glad that you've done this too, babe. And sees that views and numbers and, and walking over people to get summaries and everything. He hopes that Adam wakes up. Babe, I'm awake. I hope you win. You probably will because you're very good at that. Being the number one fan of whoever. Y'all, I'm sorry to say it. This is just all boiling down to, for some reason, jealousy. I hope you win. You've already won. Why are you saying that in a video where you're opening up about your traumatic experience with me? It's popular at the moment, so I'm pretty sure you're going to win. Why would you say that if you genuinely are just trying to tell your story? And with peace and love, I say, I hope your channel keeps growing, Bestie. And I hope that you get everything you want. But I do hope that you have a spiritual makeover. Because life is good, God is good, love is good, and I wish everyone will succeed. Because you know what, whatever you put out, you receive. I love you guys so much. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye, besties. <laughs> All right. All right. <clears throat> so, ending the video, Sebastian, don't care for you, Rich Locks, I deeply apologize. And I'm sorry for bringing you back to that place. I really, really, really mean it. And people are saying that I'm going to think your video is bad, Rich Lux. I don't. I think it's a good video. I, I do. Yeah.